Okay, now, what's going on here is that we're going to teach you some signal flow. And I'm going to go right now to the mixer track. This is our mixer. See this here? We have our kick drum, our snare drum right there. This is kind of cool. Kick and snare. I'll press play from the top. Now, we hear the sound going through, right? Well, the sound starts on the hard drive first. Then that means the region on the hard drive sends a signal out through our inserts. Here's our inserts right here. You can see here in our edit window. And that's the first one, which is insert A, which is our EQ, one band, and insert B, which is our compressor. I'm going to go back to my mixer view, which is right here. Scroll over here to the left side of my mixing board. And we see here, of course, our signal flow starts from there. It goes through our inserts next. And once it gets to the inserts and it goes through whatever's in the insert, if I have something here in the insert, it goes right through it. Otherwise, as you can see here for the hi-hat, nothing's there. So it's going right from here directly to my send. In this case, it's going through the EQ first, then through the compressor, and then it goes to my send. Now, our send, where the signal flow goes next, can be pre or post. And you'll hear it here. here this is uh, pre. Well, this is post, excuse me. I'll press play. I'm going to press stop. I'm going to mute the pianos here in the beginning. You get the reverb, right? Now I'm going to go here to po to pre. That's post. See that? Now what's happening here is that when it goes to post, that means it's going to after this fader here. So the signal flow is going through there first, and then it's getting to the send. You got that? But once it's pre, it's pre. It's before the fader. That means pre. I press pre, and the signal flow is right here. That means I control that send into the reverb. Otherwise, if I don't select pre and it's post, and I press play. So I get more sound and a little more sound input to the reverb. So at the same time here, I'm increasing the level of the dry signal, which is the snare. And I'm also increasing the amount of audio send to my send here, which is send A. You got that? Now if I go pre and I do the same thing, there's a difference here. Where I can change this here, but I'm not changing the send amount going to the drum verb. This is important. You must understand signal flow. When you're going to mix, you understand, understand signal flow and where's your signal going to and coming from. It's very important. That's pre and post for my signal. It's a good thing to know when you're actually mixing. Now, of course, we have here, this is the high here. Of course, down here at zero right there. I can go here to the bottom, and I think it's coming out of all, of course, and we saw our levels right here as well. Now we also have a thing here, for example, you saw it earlier, we have this, in the pianos here we have this auxiliary track here, which is like a subgroup. So I mean, I take these sounds here and set them to right there, which I can do here also. I would do, sometimes I'll do this with the drums, and then I'll select, I want to make a new track. And then this new track, I'll select, and I want it to be stereo, and I'll make an auxiliary track. I'll press create. Now, since I had my tracks here highlighted, it'll put it right next to it. And I could send these sounds right there. I could say, I could bring this down, I could say, okay, I'm going to move this here, and move this here. And I want to send them into here. I need to make an input for it, though, first. So I'm going to bus, I can make it bus 15, 16. And see how it appears 15, 16 right there. I can go right over here and say, okay, I want to send them out to bus 15, 16. And so you appear they're, they're going right there. Now that's the sand I can send to a, spe a specific auxiliary group. I want to group them together, maybe add some sort of special effect on these drums. And I have, make sure, I have to also make sure I go back into my I.O. setup. And I get here and I want to say, well, look, this could be my special drum effects. I can go D-R drum. And I can go effect right there. And then it's labeled. And I press OK. 
and now you'll see that they're labeled. And that's signal flow. The signal now can go from here directly into my auxiliary right here, and we have it. But I want to label this now. So I'll label it, I'll call this a drum effect. I'll press OK. And now we can see that I've created some more signal flow where I have the signal flow from send A is being sent into this auxiliary fader. And this auxiliary right here is where it'll end up at. And I can add an effect on top of the insert. So this is all has, this all has to do with signal flow. And you must understand signal flow in order for you to do some really good mixing, understand how your mixing environment works. Now, of course, you can see where here it goes to the end. In the end, it goes to the one and two output on my inbox, which, of course, all the way over here, that means it leads here to our summing amp, our summation amp, which is our master fader right there.